Hey everyone, Aaron here with Elite Water Sports down here at the Skyway Bridge. Gonna go over basically everything you need to know right before you get into wind winging. We're gonna go over our, the wings, we're gonna go over the boards, and we're gonna go over like foil positioning. A couple of different things is that, you know, wind winging is so accessible to everybody. If you've always wanted to go off your dock, well now you can wear windsurfing and uh, kiteboarding might be a really difficult. So we're talking about it being the most accessible wind sport out there. Uh, wind winging has brought in uh, a vast variety of different clients to us from uh, super, super young, all the way through those guys that have been windsurfing since the 70s, all the way up through tonight, uh, today, and uh, now they're converting over to wind winging. So we're talking guys in their 70s and 80s that are, are able to go out and really enjoy what windsurfing and kiteboarding could never produce, that, that feeling of uh, foiling and also uh, surfing uh, or the uh, disconnect of having all that gear attached to you. Uh, wind winging can provide a, a, a lot of different sensations uh, that other sports can't. So uh, going into uh, the basic overview, you know, obviously you have a sail, you have a board, and in most cases, 90% uh, of the riders out there with foils. So the reason why I say that is that, you know, right now everybody thinks that you have to get into foiling and you really don't. You don't have to get into foiling at all. You can go out on an SUP board as long as you have a dagger board or what's called a sup winder where you, it's a peel and stick uh, dagger board or a fin in the middle of your board and that allows you to go upwind and downwind. So that really attracts a lot of people that are just not uh, ready to go into that foiling realm. Um, with all of our lessons and with, uh, with teaching the vast variety of people out there, uh, we found that just about anybody with the right direction can get into the foiling game. So don't be deterred by possibly uh, intimidated by the extremity of foiling. It's for everybody and let's go over that right now, okay? So as you progress, um, you might start into uh, a, a quite large board and everybody's wondering like what size board should they buy? You know, in a sense, in, a, in, a, in an easy way to remember, a uh, um, 170 pound rider typically needs about a 100 liter board for them to just stand up on it without the board sinking into the water uh, and, and uh, producing too much instability. So with that being said, if you just remember a 170 pound rider and kind of base that math off of that uh, is about a 100 liter board for their first board or so. Um, and if say like you find yourself being a little bit closer to the beginner status not much water sports in your background you can always go up in the leaders it's not going to hurt you it's just going to make it easier where it comes to buying a board people get a little confused with this because you know in the back of their head they don't want to outgrow the board but at the same time they want to make it just enough challenging to have a good time right away but also progress faster um, in the end, you do need a little bit of professional uh, advice, like calling the shop, Elite Water Sports, and, uh, and just kind of giving us your history. Where do you come from? What have you done in your life as far as water sports go? Maybe snowboarding or skiing, or maybe, uh, maybe you've never touched a surfboard in your life, you know? So giving us that background, we can help determine the right size board for you. We're also gonna set kind of expectations, uh, realistic expectations. And we're pretty good at doing that just based off your history, okay? So let's have a conversation and we can really work you through what board to buy. Now for our lesson center, this is an inflatable board which doesn't translate apples for apples uh, in the leader range. So this is a 170 uh, liter board, right? Made by Nash, it's an inflatable board. It's very, very compact. It fits in a small suitcase about the same size as this Nova wing which makes it nice for transport. But what I mean by the, the apples for apples, a 120 liter hoverboard, which is kind of the same shape as this board, but in the hard shell carbon, would be almost as stable as this 170 inflatable. So that also brings up a couple of questions in, in, to mind, you know, and that's also a reason why to give us a call for direction on where to go with that, okay? 
So with this being our lessons board being 170 liter, most riders 200 pounds can stand up on this board without it tipping over uh, and causing too much instability. We'll even use this board all the way through maybe like 90 pounds, 100 pounds, just depending on the rider. And if we have to, we can always jump over to a 70 liter that we always have in the van. Now for your first purchase, as far as a hard shell goes, remember the apples to apples don't don't uh, you know translate very well inflatable versus hard most of our boards we can just go off averages right and our average weight rider is 150 to 200 pounders uh, they buy 75 to 95 liter boards so just give you a broad overview on on what that um, uh, involves or what that can offer you is that if you're at 95 pounds or i'm sorry not 95 pounds but 95 liters and 150 170 pounds you know, that board's going to have enough buoyancy for you to be on your knees and hold the sail above your head in like 10 to 11, 12 knots. Um, so, you know, that's a good range or a good, uh, you know, flat line to base, base uh, your first purchase off of, all right? Okay, so typical uh, progression. As you progress with the uh, smaller boards, you typically need more power. So if you were to buy a small board right away, you're gonna need more power. So you need to set up your expectations that you can't get out in less than 12, 15 knots of breeze, okay? As you go up in size on the board, you can go in lighter breezes. All right, now the Novas make a seven meter and it's made by North, uh, Nova seven meter. That's their biggest sale at the moment. They're coming out with some larger ones for 2023. Um, a seven meter is, is on the upper side of uh, how big you can go. They make eight meters out there, but in a general sense, no matter what they say in the marketing material, when you go bigger wings, that wing is now exponentially bigger. And when you stand here just on flat ground and you bring that sail out in front of you, that wing tip is going to drag. So if you're not a tall person, a seven meter kite is going to be dragging off the water and could cause a lot of frustration on that beginner level, okay? So that's another reason, give us a call, give us your experience, give us your height, give us whatever um, you know knowledge you have so we can base the size of the kite for your first sale. Also, your region plays a big uh, hand to that, right? So the ranges are like three meters all the way up through eight meters uh, this day and age, all right? They are mostly all inflatable. There's some talks about not being inflatable, but industry standard right now they're inflated like kiteboarding kites okay all right so going over to the foils a real simple translation the bigger the board or the bigger the foil the easier it is so this is 2400 right and most people don't spend too much time on the 2400 that's why we do have it in the lesson center and it is why it is our least sold foil in the shop because we know that after you learn how to foil uh, most people aren't going to spend too much time on this large of a wing. What can this wing be used for is like pumping off of a dock. You see all the videos of guys jumping off the dock and cruising around pumping with no wing, no wind, no anything. That's what this wing would be fantastic for. But at some point, you know, when you're winging around, this is going to have too much surface area, too much lift, and it's going to be quite hard uh, for you to advance too much further. Um, so. In the realms of like square centimeters, a, a, uh, an average of 1500 to 1800 is typically your first foil to buy. It's not too challenging, it's slow enough to, uh, to, to progress fast, and it's fast enough for you not to hold you back from advancing further. The good thing is, is this industry understands that people need varieties. They like accessorizing. Uh, having multiple wings in your quiver is number one thing you should have in mind just like having different size sails you should have different size front wings it's inevitable you're going to do it just bite the bullet get a couple different size wings all right so reviewing the bigger the wing the easier it is the smaller it is the faster you have to go which makes it more challenging also like the length of the mast has a lot to do with it too can you imagine standing on a two-story building versus like a one-story building well, a longer mass is gonna make you feel really elevated and well, it's gonna hurt a lot more from that height up and it has a multitude of other variables that it offers uh, that are gonna be more challenging. Uh, the longer the mast, let's just say it's harder, okay? Uh, if you go way too short, say you get into that like 40 centimeter range, okay? 
that's going to be uh, not giving you enough um, uh, versatility and height, uh, a range of motion. So you're going to have to be really super fixated on just above the water. And that's challenging in itself. Okay. Um, most people will buy a 72, uh, maybe a 65, but mostly 72. That's the most sold mast in the shop for like, what is it now? Eight years running. Okay. As you advance, longer masts are going to allow you to be more aggressive have uh, larger surface areas on your wings and be able to get into maybe bigger waves, uh, more chop. Uh, and you know, it, it's also another thing to accessorize to have multiple mass lengths as you progress through the sport, okay? So in general, wind winging is accessible to everybody. And with a little bit of direction and a little bit of time uh, spent talking to people that really know the sport uh, is gonna help you tremendously. Um, and you know what, we're always available. So give us a call 727-800-2202, EliteWaterSports.com. We're gonna have a slew of more videos coming out all about wind winging. And you know what, we've been teaching this for a couple years now. We've, uh, we've evolved our lesson center to match our local environment and how to get people to progress as fast as possible. So lean on us, let us help you, give us a call. This is Aaron with Elite Water Sports. I'll catch you later. Thank you.